Hi there, thank you very much for joining us on The Sweet Spot. It's the Racing Post's weekly fix of golf chatter and betting wisdom with Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer. We're looking ahead to four tournaments over the course of the next half hour or 20 minutes if you watch us in times 1.5 playback speed. Uh, and we'll have a little recap on last week as well. First of all, though, Steve, quick pleasantries. How are you? Why have you donned a hat today? I didn't have a time time to style my hair. As you say, four tournaments. It's been all go. Um, and I didn't want to come on here looking like a scarecrow, so I've put the Tiger Woods cap on. Righty-ho. Fair enough. Um, we'll have a quick look back on last week. Probably one for the bookmakers, I would have thought, as it was at Royal Ascot, all those long shots. And the long shots winning in the golf. Thruston, the Piston Lawrence, a hero of the sweet spot. He won the BMW International at 90 to 1. Uh, and Keegan Bradley won in America at 80s. And I'm not sure what price uh, Ruanang Yin was to win the uh, USPJ the women's. What price was she, Steve? That's a great question that I hope you wouldn't ask me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, don't I think it's fair to say she was ruining quite a lot of punters there, wasn't she? <laughs> Absolutely. There, wasn't yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my, I've got a quick takeout from last week, if I may go first, Steve. Um, and it's just that with golf, you can look at courses and who it's going to suit and which style of play. But I suppose last week in the um, in the BMW, you had a real clash of styles there, didn't you? The last two standing were were, were Lawrence, who's a big powerhouse, and, and used to lout and a little fiddly player who sort of, you know, plots his way around courses. So it does show that sometimes there isn't a predominant style that gets it done. It can just be the guy who plays the best golf and shoots lowest, can't it? You're absolutely right. I mean, I don't know if you heard the expression, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, yeah. And, um, you saw Nord Do you Archie think I would have gone 56 years without hearing that expression? <laughs> <laughs> that would be very strange, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's it. And uh, yeah, Mooch and Eichen ride was being skinned in, in various different ways last week. Um, yeah, my, my take, if, if if you will, is um, is that I might throw the form book out the window when it comes to the DP World Tour because, um, you know, get so many DP World Tour events now where the player has played badly for a really long time. Um, and then they suddenly show their true ability. You know, we had Dale Whitnell do that the other day in the Scandinavian mix. And then, you know, you know, Lawrence was in tears. Did you see his post-round interview? I did he's quite, not know. He's crying like a baby. Um, and, um, you know, they, 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 he just, he's just letting it all out because he just says, oh, I've just been missing cuts and playing so badly. And then, you know, suddenly he clicks into gear again. So, yeah, that, you know, to, to go in at 100 to 1 in, in a field of that quality he's one of the best players in that field he's gone off 100 to 1 because he's had you know he's had a few months of, of poor form so yeah i think yeah the old um form is temporary you know ability is permanent i might just slightly tinker with that famous okay. famous saying I've not heard of that um, form is temporary ability is permanent i think that's okay. uh, i think we need to learn from this i mean yeah you felt for joust didn't you, you felt for joust pitiful little putty missed at 17 wasn't it as spoken like a man who backed him obviously <laughs> oh, right. yeah, yeah yeah i mean only one birdie on sunday at 74 he's been poor in contention lately you know he, he seems to have lost his ability to, to to hold himself together in contention yeah he used to be able, he used to be all right didn't he, he used to be able to get yeah. the winning line perfectly well prolific winner of low grade events like that one but um yeah it, it, it gets us all in the end uh sammy mm -hmm. valamaki i mean tied for sixth place going to the final round i was very excited about Picking up some healthy place returns there, but um, he missed a short birdie part on the third, went pin chasing on the fourth and found water. You have very fine margins. I got, this is my other take from it. Um, we're all about takes, aren't we? Um, mm. Very fine margins in golf betting because he missed a short birdie part on the third and then went pin chasing on the fourth, found the greenside water track. Yeah, I, I don't think he would have been as aggressive on the fourth had he not, um, you know, if, if he'd made that part on the third, uh, you know, double bogey on the fourth. And yeah, I think he would have placed if he hadn't have... Um, if he'd made that part in the third, it's very fine margin. You know, thin, mm. wafer, thin margin. Well, it wasn't a very fine margin in America, though, for the Travellers Championship. Keegan Bradley pulled clear very early on Sunday. And for those of us who wanted to just sit back and enjoy Elton John at Glastonbury without having to flick across to uh, golf coverage, it was actually quite a relief. Now, I know that it did begin to look slightly close towards the end, but basically, Keegan Bradley, like I say, 80 to 1 at the start of the week, he, he won fairly comfortably. What can we learn from that? Well, I'm glad you enjoyed Elton John. I mean, you, you wouldn't Brilliant. have noticed then. At one stage, Patrick Cantillay got within three shots with three holes to play. So I was still quite. I hoping did notice because... that because well, I just did notice. On. Yeah, I did notice that. But uh, yeah, because Bradley was was threatening to throw it away. He was getting a little bit twitchy. Um, but then Cantlay bogeyed 16 
missed a short birdie part 17 bogey 18 so yeah very disappointing finish but if you'd offered me 19 under par currently at the start of the week i would have had to have taken it really because um that would have been enough to win the, the last 11 editions of the travelers you know shows how well bradley bradley played superbly to reach that so he doesn't normally putt well number one for putting last week mm. um yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in his home event, you know, he was, he was, he was overcome with with emotion because it was his his home event. Uh, but another one, humdrum form. You know, humdrum form. Throw the form book out the window. Go on, get it, launch okay. it. I will. Did you have a Glastonbury highlight, or did you devote yourself to golf last week? I didn't see much of that. I didn't see much of that. I, I feel a bit, a little bit like La, I read the Lana Del Rey story. I feel a little bit like her because she came on with her hair still being done, didn't she? Mm, <laughs> I, I, I mean, so, yeah. that, that's outrageous, isn't it? Yeah. So she's turned up half an hour late by all accounts, and then when she has turned up, she's still got the stylist working on. I mean, maybe I should have done that today. Got the gel out while I was on the sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, but no, I didn't. I didn't catch much of that. No, you know me, oh, the ultimate Elton John was brilliant. Elton John was he was really? Good. Oh, he was excellent. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, seventy six. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to still be going strong like that at seventy six? It was marvellous. Yeah, all credit, all credit. He probably he probably thinks he was brilliant as well, and he's got a bit of an ego on him. Oh, um, I don't know about that. No, I thought yeah. it was excellent. A huge crowd. Oh, going back to the golf, I did see one nice little clip of Keegan Bradley's children, who are obviously very well brought yeah. up, very polite, um, saying, great job, Mr. Reevy, to old Chez. That was, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, that is nice, yeah. Yeah, he said winning with, when you've got uh, family around is like, yeah, diff in a different stratosphere to, to winning before he had kids. Like, yeah, 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 all credit for him to hold himself together because that meant a lot to him. Mm. Should we look ahead now? I think we should. Um, yeah, Rose Zhang did all right, and yeah, we, we're going to be big Rose Zhang fans in the future. Finished eighth. Um, yeah, next, next, next major, we'll be looking forward to back in there again. I should should okay. think. Well, I think that's ne the week after next. And this week, though, we have got we've got the uh, Rocket Mortgage Classic in America. We've got the British Masters, which thankfully, after many weeks of moribund, stagnant field, same old faces, has a sprinkling of stardust. We've got Liv, Liv are back, Liv Valderrama, and we've got the US Senior Open. So plenty to be getting on with. We'll start with the Rocket Mortgage Classic. A sad irony that at a time when everyone's mortgage payments are rocketing, that they're the sponsors this, this week. Uh, but we'll focus on the golf. And here are the latest indicative prices. Tony Finau heads the field at 12 to 1. Ricky Fowler's 14. Colin Morikawa and Justin Thomas are 16. Then at 18, we've got Max Homer and Hideki Matsuyama. 20 to 1, Sunjay Emma and Tom Kim. 28 to 1, last week's winner, Keegan Bradley, 33 bar. So it's kind of grade one and a half, I suppose you might call it. Not quite top tier, but loads and loads of really good names. Wide open. Where are they playing and what kind of player might this one suit? Yes, the Rocket Mortgage Classic in association with Quasi Quateng. Uh, it's a Detroit Golf Club, Minnesota, 7,370 yards, par 72, four par fives, an absolute doddle. Average winning score, 23 under par. Um, we've been playing here since 2019. We've got sunny and calm weather this week. It's chops away. Last three winners, Bryson DeChambeau, Cam Davis, Tony Finau. You know, this layout can be overwhelmed by a classy powerhouse. 156 runners going to post. OK, right then. How many tips have you got this week, Steve? Three. Righty-ho. Will we be finding out today whether you've gone with the carry-on or the traditional <laughs> four? We won't actually, know. We won't. I won't no, no, four. no. Okay. If no, we did, no. what would you be going with? <laughs> it's a good question. There was mixed um, opinion on the comments last week. Some people quite like the new, slightly sort of sinister, creepy four. Yeah. And other people uh, hankered for the good old days of a lusty four. Well, it was a mixed reaction. Maybe it depends on my sort of um, happiness levels. You know, okay. I, I do the creepy one when I'm a little bit flatter. OK, fine. Right then. Well, we've got three this week. So lead on. Who is your main selection? Ludwig Eber. <laughs> Go on, uh, Ludwig. 45 to 1 is the best available currently. Let's not mess about. Clearly going to win early in his PGA Tour career. He's got all the star tools to become a superstar. He's not even young. This is the point we must make. He's not even young in, in modern golfing terms. You know, he chose to see out his college career. He started on the PGA Tour at the age of 23. He won professional events, Nordic Golf League in 2020, as we've discussed. Then he became the dominant force in, in amateur golf. Yeah, you know, This is a future world number one. 
I won't offer to eat my pants on that one. I've, 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 I've made enough offers of, of pants eating. He's played four PGA Tour events this year. He's finished in the top 25 in three of them. This week's venue, for me, is the most suitable course he's faced in his, his, his short PGA Tour career. He can overwhelm it with his power. And it's a humdrum field, isn't it? I thought you were quite generous with your rating there. Yeah, it's a humdrum field. He'll fear, he'll fear, right. he'll, he'll fear nobody in this lineup. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, Ludwig that's not humdrum, is it? I mean, humdrum is when Sun Jaim's favourite, and wow, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I'm going to make that noise until you stop talking. Wow, right, go on. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think Ludwig Backers will be playing uh, Ode to Joy on Sunday. That's, uh, oh, that's brilliant. A little, little Beethoven reference there. Yeah, right. I rated that very you good. Like right then. Joy. It's a good song that. Is it? I don't like any my I, 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 plays I, I, it on the on a recorder. That's how I know about really? it. Really? I need yeah. to join the recorder. Mm. Okay, that's right then. Um, that's a terrible I- instrument. That the recorder, isn't it? Oh, God. it gets kids into um into instruments, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, it does. I oh, know. Start oh, no. the triangle, move on to the recorder, and then before you know it, you've got a trombone in your hands. Mm, excellent. Is she musical? She, what, what, yeah, what, loves like... the game. Yeah, loves the game. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She wants to be you know, a performing artist. Um, we had Big Me Day the other day. Have you had a Big Me Day where you, you go into school dressed as what you want to be in your career? Uh, so, all the, all the kids, yeah, it's a great idea, isn't it? In my day, that sort of fun didn't happen at school, you know, as I was telling, yeah. it's all about chains and like math. Now they have things like that. Um, and, and I actually went into a talk that day. It's just a long story, you might not be did interested you? in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I not, no, I'm very interested in that. <laughs> you did a talk to school about becoming a degenerate yeah. gambler. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Well, I had to leave betting out of it. I went to talk about being a sports journalist. Oh, brilliant. I had to be really careful not to talk about betting because obviously all the parents would be angry as anything if I introduced yeah, betting to their eight-year-old kids. But, um, yeah, I was, I, it went OK. I was just a little Did bit... Did you have them in the palm of your hand? I, I was annoyed with the um, with the policeman. This is actually a long story. The no, policeman. no, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Go on. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. <laughs> so I went in there. I had a 1 p.m. slot. I was going to talk about sports journalism. I thought they'd be quite excited about that. When I was in the waiting room, for, waiting to go into uh, wherever I, where I assumed would be the assembly, uh, yeah. two policemen came in, sat down next to me, really awkward. I thought, well, I, I, then I sort of worked out they must be here to do a talk too. So the policemen, get, yeah, this is sort of like Glastonbury times, but the policemen get the main stage. They yes. charge in, they charge into the assembly oh, hall with a big crowd. I get ushered off just to the year three classroom, like the sort of oh, minor off to the other stage. Uh, yeah. I couldn't oh, believe no. it. Yeah, the, the policemen were considered like they were lords, you know. Um, and how did they, how did the, the classes split up? Was it absolutely standing room only in the main hall? And then you've got like three people sort of looking at their phones while you're trying to interview them. Yeah, I was like a right, yeah, one of the rising stars from a, from a lesser stage at, at Glastonbury, and uh, yeah, I was really oh. it deflated because I prepared prepared well <laughs> for it. And um, and the police, and one of the policemen couldn't even speak properly. He'd just been to the dentist in the waiting room. I was trying, to, <laughs> I was trying to do pleasantries to him, and he goes, "I'm just been to the dentist." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I am with props. I had props. I had armbands from the Open Championship. I put a lot of effort into. It. And then the year, yeah, all I had was the year threes. But yeah, hopefully some of them will want to become sports journalists. Oh well, you did your best, mate. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring this back to the uh, Rocket Mortgage Classic then. So we've got uh, Ludwig Aberg as your main selection. Who's the big danger? It's Cam Davis, who uh, I know I tip a lot. He's 33 to 1 for this. Uh, And he won this tournament two years ago, which was his maiden PGA Tour title. Like Aberg, textbook swing, effortless power. Davis won the 2017 Australian Open. He won the Corn Ferry Tour in 2018. Um, His career has progressed nicely. Yeah, He's always making advancements. And uh, this year, best ever majors performance. Do you remember how he played in the USPJ last month? Finished fourth. Finished fourth in the USPJ. He's had a bit of a lull since then, but a fine around 63 in the Travelers Championship on Sunday. I think that's going to be the spark that gets him contending for titles again. OK, jolly good. And who's the third tip? It's Justin Sir. Uh, it was available at 70 to 1 for this. He's made five cuts in a row, still not getting any respect. 26th in the USPJ, 27th in the US Open. 
earlier this year, fifth in the Honda Classic, sixth in the Players' Championship. You're always destined to become a superstar. He's cemented on the PGA Tour now. Former world number one amateur, Corn Ferry Tour Player of the Year last season, and one of the best putters in the business. I mentioned the low scoring. I mean, we're certain to get a low scoring week. So has got the ability to make dozens of birdies. He's so good on the greens. And this is the first time he's come to this tournament in, in good nick. Two previous visits, he had fitness and form issues. He's in great shape for this one. Okay, cool. All right, I'm not going to um, mess around with any more ado. We're going to go straight oh, okay. across the British Masters, right? No, fair enough. Okay, right then. Um, so British Masters takes place at the Belfry. I played there about six weeks ago and can report that if you hit it 190 yards off the tee, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. But thankfully, this lot hit it a bit further. But Teddy, Justin Rose, yeah, Justin Rose. We've got a big name on the European tour, which is fantastic. And not surprisingly, he heads the market. In fact, you'd probably contend there's two big names because your beloved Min Woo Lee is playing <laughs> as well. So it's nine to one, Justin Rose, 12, Min Woo Lee, 14, Adrian Moronk, 18, Jordan Smith, 25, Alexander Bjork, 28, Robert McIntyre, 33 of those. Steve, tell us all about the Belfry. The Brabazon course at the Belfry, Sutton Coldfield, England, 7,336 yards, par 72, three par fives, 12 par fours. The Brabazon has hosted Ryder Cups, 2002, the most recent, uh, and loads of DP World Tour events. The, the British Masters form is from 2006, 2007, 2008, 2021, 2022. We had a UK championship there in, in 2020, and we had the British Challenge on the Challenge Tour in 2021. As you well know, loads of water on this track. Yeah, it's a real grind, um, you know, focus on strong ball strikers. Decent weather, but a bit breezy on Sunday. 156 going to post. OK, a very overplayed golf course. I must say we, we have the Ed Chamberlain um, golf day there. And obviously it's for charity. So I'm not going to start ripping into the venue. And it's, it's obviously beautiful and it's a pleasure to play some of these places. But a fair bit of wear and tear on the greens, I would say. So oh, on the fairway. So I don't know if people might find the odd untimely divots or, or what but anyway there you go is it because it's so central uh you know you can get you can get there yeah. from the north you can get there from the exactly. south so that's probably mm. what well, people love it's very it accessible they? yeah absolutely mm. and it has mm. got probably three or four superb iconic brilliant holes i mean 10's amazing 18's terrific so yeah fair play i'm sure it'll be a brilliant week uh how many tips three three okay who do you like the most i love adrian moronk at 14 to 1, who can cement his place on the European Ryder Cup team by winning at the Belfry on Sunday. We all want to see little Moronki become the first pole to play in the Ryder Cup. I'm feeling very confident we're going to get our wish. The Belfry, long, punishing track. The driving ability in Moronk stands him in great stead there. He made his course debut in 2021 British Masters, finished third. Magnificent over the weekend of that event. One shot shy of the playoff. Since then, he's won the Irish Open on a similar course to the Belfry. He's won the Australian Open. He's won the Italian Open. Far more confident player these days. I can forgive his miscut last year. He was still a maiden then, and he was on a frustrating run of, of near misses. Now the silverware is flowing. He's inside the top 50 of the world rankings. His future is bright. I think he's going to show everyone how well suited he is to the Belfry. Moronk's form figures from his last three starts in regulation DP World Tour events. One, five, three. Missed the cut in the Canadian Open by a shot. Missed the cut in the US Open by a shot. Who cares? Come on. It's quality fields. Quality fields. He's playing superbly. Uh, only one fi ice on the gate. Well, final point, because I know yeah, I can sense you're in it. You really want us to speed up, because we're very no, slow. No, no, I'm fine. Uh, I'm uh, fine. Uh, 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 um, not, only one, we wouldn't only, have had the police story, would we, if, if we were on the hurry up? No, no, no that's, true, that's true. That's true. That's true. Oh, OK, I'll relax. I'll relax. Uh, only one player outscored him in the final round of the BMW on Sunday. Yeah, so, yeah, little Moronki's playing superbly. Yes, jump aboard. Great. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm certainly not giving you the hurry up today, Steve. You go at your I... pace. You dictate. It's your show. Right, you. then who's the main danger? Come on. <laughs> it's Jordan Smith at 18 to 1, who, who like Moronk, is in total control of his swing. You know, he's finding the sweet spot every time, churning out greens and regulation. You know, Smith was sixth in the European Open at the start of this month. His next tournament was the US Open, 20th in the US Open, closed with a 66 at LACC. Only three players in the field could better that Sunday round from Smithy. We know he's one of the best ball strikers on the DP World Tour. Belfry, the perfect place to show off that skill for me. His British Masters form figures are 17-21. We were on him for this last year. 
We had lots of aqua trouble on the Saturday, broke my heart in two, but only four players outscored him on the Sunday. So uh, I'm going in again. Yeah, yeah. They've locked on each way bets. Yeah, you, you, you should, we must mention the each way terms. Yeah, there's a lot of 10 places out, out there. Um, yeah, and these boys are, 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 are ripe for, 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 for each way bets. Don't forget, though, it's really important. Don't just be beguiled by the number of places. Take care. Pay attention to that fraction because some 10 will be accompanied by a seventh the odds. So you've just got to be very, very careful. Okay, The fraction is as important as the number. Do you agree, Steve? Yeah, that's a catchy one, isn't it? The fraction mm. is as important as the number. Mm. Yeah. OK. Um, and who's sorry? Who's our final selection for the British Masters? Richard Mansell. 55 to 1 Richard Mansell, Nigel to his friends, who is from this neck of the woods. He knows the belfry like the back of his hand. The course sets up wonderfully for him. It's a big boy's track, this. It lends itself to quality driving, tee to green solidity. Mansell, formidable with the big dog in hand. And he's been threatening a DP World Tour breakthrough for ages. You know, we've been tipping him on the sweet spot since the old king died. He's had nine top tens. He was sixth in the Singapore Classic in February, and he's been creeping back into form in recent weeks. Last year's British Masters, he finished eighth. Nobody outscored him in, in the final round. Uh, I think the pride of Canuck may well give the locals um, what they want this week. You know, a half decent week of putting, Mansell's certain to be in the thick of things. Lovely. And what do you make of uh, Justin Rose's chances? The fine young man. I mean, we're on the fine young man in the Canadian Open, weren't we? Finished mm. eighth in that, but he won absolute shocker of a drive on the Sunday. Yeah, you know, he looked like he was going to win the Canadian Open for us. He hit an awful drive, um, which changed everything. He made a double bogey. And that's been his problem lately. He's had some some shocking drives in his locker. Uh, he's just been a bit loose off the tee. So on a course like this, uh, uh, the odds he is, I can, I can resist him. And one quick word on Min Woo Lee, who I thought I was expecting you to tip because I know how much you love Min Woo Lee. What don't you yeah. like about him for this? I think he's a huge danger man, but he, you know, he's, he's had a long journey from Connecticut there. Um, he was in the thick of things in the US Open for a long way. I, I, yeah, I just think he might be a bit sluggish from the starting stalls. OK, right then. So Liv and the PGA, the uh, couple that divorced, hated each other, recently decided to jump back in uh, and give it another go, but are still living in separate rooms. That's my analogy. Uh, there's still no word on how this is supposed to work. It's all very peculiar. We carry on as if they were still enemies. And this week we've got the Live Golf Valderrama, that fantastic course down in southern Spain. Uh, the usual field, the usual format starts on Friday. Cam Smith favourite at 15 to 2, Brooks Kupka 10, Dustin Johnson and Sergio Garcia 11, 16 Mito Pereira and Bryson. Deshambo as well as Joaquin Neiman and Harold Varner the third. Oh, and Taylor Gooch, blimey. And it's 18 to 1 bar. Right then, Steve, tell us all about this one. Valderrama is a toughie, isn't it? It is. It's in Sota Grande, Cadiz. 7,010 yards, par 71. Cadiz. Is it not in Cadiz? No, really? Oh, <laughs> Where's Sota Grande then? I just love saying no, it's Spanish, but no, I just thought I'd throw it's another one. Between, in. It's between Gibraltar and Marbella. OK. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's within an hour's drive. Within an hour's is, drive. It's not really relevant. Anyway. I just, I love throwing my tongue around these Spanish places. I just thought I'd throw an extra one in there. OK, mate. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's only 7,010 yards, but don't let that fool you into thinking it's easy. Par 71, three par fives. It's hosted numerous DP World Tour events. I'll focus on this millennium. Uh, we've had the 2000 <laughs> WGC Amex, the Andalusia Masters, in 2010, 2011, and from 2017 to 2022. The 2016, 2016 Spanish Open um, was also there. So, yeah, Valderrama, one of the tightest tracks in the world, I'd say. Thin, tree-lined fairways, heavy, rough, small greens, accuracy, essential. And we've got some breeze in the forecast. So, yeah, the live guys, some of these live guys have never seen Valderrama, which a lot of them this week are in for a real room for a real shock. So, yeah, standard fare, 48 going to post, three rounds, no cut, $4 million to the winner. Shotgun start. Uh, 2 15 pm UK and Ireland time on Friday. And where does one watch it again? It's the Live Golf app, isn't it? It's the Live Golf Plus app, unless the, the new deal has changed anything. Um, there is no new deal, I don't think. No, no. Deal or no I've just deal. quickly got to tell you, I bottled out of playing Valderrama once. I was invited by someone, and then when I found out that apparently that they sort of, there's a bloke monitoring you on the first tee, and if you if you look like you're crap at golf, which I am, they uh they 
frog well they don't quite frog march you but they politely tell you that you can't play and so there's no way I was putting myself through that <laughs> I mean can you think of any well obviously there's plenty of things worse but in a golfing <laughs> context that's absolutely tragic isn't it that's immense pressure isn't it I sure oh. they've got to let you finish a hole because even the best players in the world sometimes get a bad shot don't they oh, no. um you know it's I've really seen I've seen play, I've seen professionals top golf shots along the ground and that so imagine if you yeah. Tiger yeah, but I think there. they can probably still tell if you if you've got a swing, can't they? You know. Anyway. Yeah, they probably just look at your your, your shape, don't they, and your golf Absolutely. bag and whatnot. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's going to be one of the biggest regrets you take to your grave, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, no, notwithstanding that, who's going to win? Live, <laughs> live golf, Valder Armour. How many tips have we got for this one? We got two for this. Okay, and who's the main and selection? I think. I think the number one selection is the best golf bet of the week, actually. The 14 to 1 Sergio Garcia um, is a fantastic bet. Yeah, because you've got loads of course debutants going to this unusual track. Um, I think the, 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 yeah, there's some quality players that are turning up for the first time this week and they're, 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 they're going to be in for a shock because this is so difficult and you need course experience and you've got loads of you know, old veterans of the European Tour that are in this field. They're the ones to concentrate on for me. I think course experience will be decisive, um, especially when you consider that these events are 54 holes. You know, there's no time to settle in at a venue in these, no. these live events. You've got to be right in your game from the off. Sergio Garcia started playing on this course when he was 13 years old, and he's been a regular at Valderrama throughout his European Tour career. He's won three deeper World Tour events at this course. Two of those wins, two of those wins weren't long ago, Bruce. I mean, 2017 and 2018 and the Thea Masters. He describes Valderrama as his favourite course in the world. Um, and we've seen enough of him lately to know that he's, he's, in, he's in good nick for this. Uh, he finished runner-up in Live Singapore at the end of April. Then he carded back-to-back -back rounds of 66 in a US Open qualifier. I mean, Garcia's been getting a lot of stick lately for, um, you know, for being a bit of a troublemaker with all, the, all, all of the golfing politics. But he, he went and qualified for the US Open. That was a, that was a feather in his cap. He shows he still had a little bit of hunger there. Um, back to back 66s. And then he made the most of his ticket because he, he played well at a LACC. Four solid rounds, 27th place. So, uh, yeah, I think Garcia is, is the man to beat this week. Um, you know, he's, he's usually the man to beat at Valderrama, obviously in lesser fields than this one. But, um, yeah, I'm very excited about Garcia this week. I mean, the bookies obviously know everything you've just told us. Hence, he's much shorter than he would be for, you know, uh, a standard live event. But you still think it's worth taking on. You think they haven't quite got to grips with just how good he is around here? I think I think you're absolutely right. They haven't quite got to grips with it. And I think the punting community agrees with me because, you know, there's been a lot of blue on the on the, on the odds checker, as they say. Um, yeah, the opening shows were quite generous. There's still some 14 to 1 about. Gobble it up if you can. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no one I'd rather be on. Yeah, I, I okay. think he's the I think he's the most likely winner, which is a, is a bold claim when you know he's, he's as a as a few players ahead of him in the betting. But I wouldn't have anyone ahead of him in the betting. Right, you've got one more, and you're talking about journeyman European Tour Pro. So I think you're going to go for Henrik Stenson. It's a ruddy good stab, but he's got a surprisingly poor record at, at Valderrama, oh. uh, and I am going to go instead for Ian Poulter. One of your favourites says wow, eighty to gosh, one. Here in Polter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an exciting tournament, and you want to be on these these veterans. Polter won the Volvo Masters in two thousand and four. I actually went to that tournament, and he was magnificent. He beat Sergio Garcia in, in a playoff. He went in, and, and he was nineteen years ago. Who'd have thought nineteen year old golf form would still be pertinent? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, he he, he finished in the. Poulter finished in the top 10 in the Volvo Masters for five years in a row from 2003 to 2007, including a victory there. He relishes this assignment. And there's been there's been enough lately to, to justify this this wager at, at juicy prices. He's been finishing mid division in, in the, on the live circuit, you know, 20 this, 20 that. Um, I think the course edge that he has this week elevates him onto the first page of the leaderboard. And yeah, he's had a spring in his step since the announcement. A lot of the live guys. They all feel um, cock of the north now, don't they? Yeah, the golf in politics is has is, is put a spring in Poulter's step. Um, and I think he's looking to put the icing on the cake. You see this as a great opportunity to put the icing on the cake of his live career. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the live circuit ends this season. I think they'll play out the season and this will be the, the end of it. Um, and Poulter will want to get a four million dollar check in his bank account, wouldn't he? Smashing. OK, all done there. Yeah, all done there.
Our final tournament then is the US Seniors Open and it begins uh, around about midday on Thursday and Steve Stricker is 11 to 4 favourite, Porek Harrington 4 to 1, Stephen Alka 7 to 1 and then it's 14 Jerry Kelly, 16 Ernie Els and Steve Names and Miguel Angel Jimenez, the brilliant David Toms and Darren Clark and Bernard Langer 28 and it's 40 bar. Who hosts this tournament and what kind of play might it suit Steve? It's at Century World Golf Course, Stevens Point, Wisconsin, 7,218 yards par 71. Century World opened in 1982, three par fives, four par threes. It's a long, flat course, lots of water hazards, large greens, fast greens, um, and f amazing flowers. Yeah, this is from my oh, research. I lovely. cannot get, I can't get over how amazing the flowers are there. If you look at some of the aerial shots of Century World, You'll be an absolute. Is it S E S E N T R Y? Yeah, Century, Century World. World. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the most incredible flower beds I've ever seen. Um, I'm not Up there with Augusta. Yeah, yeah. I think it edges Augusta. Aren't you? Yeah, have a look oh, at the aerial shots of oh, Century wow. World. I think your jaw will drop. I mean, yeah, I'm not I'm a looking big forward to that. Flower man, but I, I, that's my big take from it. Um, but it, it, it looks difficult, you know. Yeah, it looks like a proper US Open venue. I mean, a few people are saying LACC was too easy, weren't they, the other day? I think the uh, the round bellies will have some problems with this one. Um, but they've got a good weather forecast sunny and hot, light breezes. Okay, then, right. Who will bloom at this lovely flowery <laughs> golf course? <laughs> I think oh, sorry, be... how many tips more to the point? J -j 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 just the one, just the okay. one. Okay, and he and, is uh, it's Podrick Harrington. Um, yeah, a friend of the sweet spot. He, he produced. Did you watch the Dick's Sporting Goods Open last week? <laughs> I mean, he, he produced. He produced golf. I've, I've from recorded the, it. <laughs> I mean, for golf fans, it was sort of pornographic. I mean, it was. was it? Uh, yeah, because it was that what what Podrick Arrington did on that back nine on Sunday was it was the best golf of his life he, he, he would mm -hmm. say i mean he, he's been tweeting about it ever since he says he, he says he's played 500 tournaments trying to produce a finish like that to win a golf tournament and he's finally done it he can't believe how well he played um let me just take you through his his closing holes okay birdie 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 eagle birdie par to win by a shot Oh, blimey, that's a finish, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it, it was incredible. And, um, yeah, Pod's absolutely buzzing. And, and he's entering the Ryder Cup conversation, Bruce. This is the this is the crazy thing. He's, he's entering the conversation. Don't really? shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. He's entering the no, conversation. Well. Yeah, yeah. Like, as we've said all year, it? Steve, there are vacancies there for some, you know, once you take the big seven or eight out, there's, there's going to be a couple of people on that team who the casual golf, follower when he engages with the Ryder Cup he or she's gonna go who the hell's that but yeah it could be Harrington well if he if, if Luke Donald wants to load up on experience I mean the fine young man Justin Rose is probably going to get the gig but if he wants a real you know wily old veteran to guide some of the young guns um you know Podrick Harrington is playing so well that he, he, he has to enter the conversation he's not gonna, he's not gonna pick um, Harrington but yeah well we shall see did you just have a glass of red wine at 10 o'clock in the morning then no, did you I did not I'm did... drinking water oh that's water I had a sort of dark edge to it. oh it's, it's, your, it's your shirt it's going through your shirt yeah I thought oh, you, had I a yeah. you had a tumbler of red wine there. Yeah, I've got a, quite a fancy uh tumbler so it, yeah it probably yeah. made it look a bit tinted yeah cripes um mm. yeah, there's no there's no law against it um so, yeah, yeah, Podrick Harrington. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he'll, he'll play in the Ryder Cup either, but I think the fact that he's entering the conversation shows how well he's playing. Uh, we've only had one show of betting so far. Four to one, I thought was perfectly fair. I mean, I <clears throat> he's the longest driver in this field. This is a long course by uh, by senior standards, and he's the defending champion. I've got, I've uh, got to stop nodding briefly just while I see if I can find a price for him for the Ryder Cup, but I am listening, okay? Yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah, any, yeah, 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 well, yeah, I don't. I, 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 yeah, I hate to say it, but I think, um, I think this golf tournament is a straight match between the front two. I can't see anyone else winning it. I mean, Steve Stricker, we have to give a huge mention to. I mean, um, he's going for the Grand Slam as we've discussed. Remember our yeah. Stricker fever the other day. He's he, he's two down, three to go. Doesn't normally play in the in the open, the, the seniors open, but if he gets the chance this time of going for the Slam, he's going to get on the jet. Why would he not normally play that? You just can't be asked if you pardon the uh, pardon wow. the French. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He just he, he's just he's just an age. Yeah, you know, he's fifty six. Yeah, I mean it's a long old trek, isn't it? He just prefers 
hunting in Wisconsin. Well, he's um, from Wisconsin, so... Yeah, so yeah, he's playing his home state this week. For me, it's Harrington or Stricker. Which one do you prefer? 11-4 Stricker, 4-1 to Harrington. I think Harrington with his tail up um, is the one to be on. You know, you, you know, a high roller might suggest I'm going to back both, you know, but um, I'm... I'm, I'm back I'm, both at uh, a shade of odds against that. 4-1 to and 11-4 to four is... 47 percent so yeah around about yeah 11 to 10 a little bit better than that high rollers be sniffing around that but uh, yeah, I, i'm a member of the working class i can't entertain that idea okay mate right should we recap i think we should because there's a lot of recapping to do isn't there four tournaments nine selections yeah yeah two. nine selections so we we've we got nine friends and f- 507 enemies this week so i worked oh, it out yes yeah, so, that's a good um, way of looking at it isn't it yeah, when you, it's a good word. So, when, it, when you look at it that way, the odds are stacked against us, but you never know. Let's hope we can defy them. Right then, who have we got for yeah. Rocket Mortgage Classic? Ludwig Aberg, Cam Davis and Justin Sir. The British Masters. Adrian Moronk, Jordan Smith, Richard Mansell. Uh, the Liv Valderrama. Sergio Garcia. Ian Poulter. And the US Senior Open. Podrick Harrington. OK. And someone said last week in the comments, could you go back to Steve saying us what his one golf bet of the week would be? So what would oh. the one bet of the golf uh, bet week be? For high staking punters, it would be Sergio Garcia to win Live Golf Alderama. For low skate, low skating punters, it'll be uh, it'll be a each way quad of uh, Ludwig Aberg, Adrian Moronk, Sergio Garcia and Podrick Harrington. OK. Right, lovely stuff. Um, we have got next week, we've got three next week. It's the John Deere Classic, it's the Made in Himmerland, and it's the US Women's Open. Uh, what have you got on between now and then, Steve? I'm just having a very, very long birthday commiseration session. You know, I don't, I'm like you, I hate having birthdays now, they're just depressing, aren't they? But this one's been quite good, actually. I had a lovely oh. weekend going to sort of some, some nice public houses with my family. When was, stroke, is it? Yesterday. 45 oh, yeah I was 45 yesterday and I'm um, just stretching out along along yeah I'm, I'm going camping on on the Isle of Portman tomorrow with my with my pals um gonna let my hair down and uh, drink some cider you mentioned the commenters I, th- I must thank the commenters for the advice I get on the on the gout they're fantastic yeah, bunch of comments yeah they're, incredible you know, isn't it there's all sorts of uh, ointments and uh yeah, cures being suggested. That's terrific, isn't it? I take it all on board. I, th- I take every comment on board. Thank you very much. And yeah, the, 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 they say cider is, is better than, than traditional beer for, for gout sufferers. So yeah, I'm going to combine cider with my gout drugs and, and see how that goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, 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 I am a cider drinker. Have you ever heard of the Wurzels? Great Yes, band. of course. Yeah, I've heard of the Wurzels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh, obviously, I've got a brand new combine harvester. It's a big one, but they've got one called what? I like cider. I am a cider drinker. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, That's I'm joining amazing. that club now. Yeah, I'm a member of the Marvelous. Wurzels. Lovely. I'm playing golf at East Brighton today. Have you ever played there? Right. Oh, I haven't played East Brighton. It's or a West lovely Brighton. course, right? But I'm slightly concerned because one of the holes runs adjacent to the race course and they're racing there this afternoon. <gasps> so I just, I'm, I'm really paranoid that, say, the gates will open just as I'm driving and I'll shank one straight towards the field as they oh, thunder along gosh. the course. I'd imagine there'll be a steward or something deployed to sort of tell us to wait until the, the, they've, they've gone past right now. i hope so i mean you, you know, were talking about your regrets on your deathbed you know not playing valderama but imagine if you killed a horse with a golf ball yeah um you would not be able to get over that would you no you wouldn't no, no. but i'm sure i'm sure they've got it all under control well, so that's, that's me so. uh in the meantime we're back next week like i say to preview those so good luck with your bets this week steve thank you very much for all your input to this week's show thank you very much to producer will Most of all, thank you, as ever, for watching. If you enjoy the show, please do rate, subscribe, like, comment. Yeah, let us know you fancy this week. And if you nail the winner, we'll give you a shout out next Tuesday. Join us then for another sweet spot.